Welcome to Good Libations, our program about mixology. I'm Ethel Andrews. I'm a mixologist. And as you know, I always endeavor to make drinks from fresh ingredients only, not using any mixes, and trying to be a bit innovative in the preparation of them within the constraints of your average, we'll put it this way, home bar. And as you know, we've been discussing liquid nitrogen drinks, and for the most part, that preparation method is beyond um, our means financially and also training wise because there are dangers associated as I've discussed in other episodes about using liquid nitrogen to, to prepare cocktails. But if you want to get a similar effect, you can use dry ice, not in the drink, but you can use it initially in the bowl that you prepare the drink in and you can use a metal bowl with a handle just like you would for um, using nitrogen infused drinks but you of course would have to remove the dry ice after the show of all the smoke and cooling the beverage down and what is going to happen is you're not going to get a frozen drink because as I discussed before alcohol freezes much 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 below what dry ice can accomplish. Dry ice can freeze it below minus 100 Fahrenheit, but believe it or not, liquid nitrogen gets it below 300 minus 300 Fahrenheit, which is quite an accomplishment. But again, we're going to use uh, the simple method of a shaker. And as is the case with the other drinks, uh, this particular cocktail is pretty strong. Uh, it mostly involves alcohol. So you're going to get a very, very potent tasting drink. And mind you, it doesn't taste like it's laden of alcohol, but there is a lot of alcohol in it. So you want to be careful when you drink it. And I'm going to go ahead and put our ice in the shaker. And as I mentioned before, proper ice storage is critically important. We want to make sure that our ice is not melting, that it is staying as a solid because if it melts, you're gonna get dilution in the drink, which is gonna compromise the flavor and the quality of the drink. So at the very least, use an ice chest to keep it cold. Because if you don't, again, you're gonna get dilution and it will compromise the drink. So I'm gonna go ahead and reach down and get the ice in the shaker. And that's another thing too, sometimes we see people using plastic shakers and we know that sometimes those are used at bars and they're also offered on kind of a gimmick type basis when people are promoting different tequilas and so forth. But it's not without reason that metal stainless steel shakers are preferable. And again, it has to do with the fact that it keeps the drink really cold and when you're shaking it, it stays cold. That's why the outside of the container will frost over. So always keep that in mind. It's worth investing in a good stainless steel metal shaker. And this particular drink incorporates bourbon. And this is called an orange peach delight. And we're going to initially add the bourbon. And then we're going to go ahead and add a bit of vodka. Yeah, vodka is a good neutral grain spirit if you want to add more power to a drink. And if you are using nitrogen, you're going to need uh, to have drinks that are a bit more forward with the alcohol. And also, you may have to add, as I mentioned, simple syrup, agave, or sugar to it, depending on what you're making. And in this drink, too, we're going to add some peach liqueur here, or peach infusion, I should properly say. You can use peach liqueur, but it's going to make it pretty sweet. So I prefer to use peach infusion. And again, we're going to add just a little bit of the mango pineapple, which may seem counterintuitive and weird with bourbon, but it actually works and it adds kind of a uniqueness to the drink. But just a little bit, not an overpowering amount. 
So again, we're using bourbon, a bit of vodka, a bit of peach infusion, and just a tiny bit of pineapple mango. You could also use orange juice if you wish. That's perfectly acceptable. And you could also, if you wish, add fresh orange juice into it. So I'm gonna go ahead and shake it up. And unlike the other drink, which kind of looks like a 50-50 bar because of the addition of the heavy cream, you're not gonna get that effect with this, but you're gonna get a powerhouse of flavor with this cocktail. And we're gonna use our margarita style glass because of the slightly too level effect here. And we'll disperse the drink into the glass. And as before, we're gonna add peach to this particular drink. And we're actually gonna add a bit more peach juice in addition to the peach garnish with this particular drink. Because peach, as you know, goes very well with bourbon. In fact, with many southern cocktails, it's a tradition to combine bourbon with peach. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Squeeze the peach juice in. Add that one because it's been macerated a bit. And we're going to squeeze a bit more. And add that. And I can smell the um, lovely aroma of the peach as I'm adding this. And we're going to add a bit of juice here, but not put more peach in there. And this is kind of reminiscent of the Georgia peach, which is a bourbon-based drink. And also the Japanese Hawaiian peach blossom, which I make, and which actually properly should made with, be made with Suntory bourbon. But you can make it with any bourbon, even one of our less expensive American-type bourbons. That's perfectly acceptable because Suntory is pretty expensive. So we're going to go ahead and taste this shaker method style. And oh, that does taste really good. And the bourbon is up front, just as it should be. Very, very good. And I might add too that you could, if you want a sweeter style drink, add the orange liqueur to it. I don't choose to do that myself, but you could. Because again, it marries with the bourbon very, very well. And because this drink was basically designed to be used with liquid nitrogen, it is pretty strong like the other drinks were. So, you know, be judicious in your consumption of it because you may be really surprised. It's like a, consuming a zombie or a Long Island iced tea that is properly prepared. You're not going to get a huge alcohol finish, but you definitely will feel it if you drink too much of it. And again, that detracts from the basic enjoyment of the drink. And again, this drink incorporates bourbon for sure, vodka for sure, peach infusion for a certainty, maybe the mango pineapple, and perhaps also the orange liqueur. And you can also add orange juice or squeeze in about a quarter of a fresh orange. Those are optional methods of preparation. But any way that you do it, you're gonna have a lovely cocktail even just using the shaker. And I want to emphasize once again the proper ice storage that we don't have diluted melting ice that compromises our drinks and makes them weak and insipid. We want them to have pronounced flavor, not weak flavor. And again, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Good Libations. I'm Ethel Andrews, I'm a mixologist, and we've had another adventure this time about the relatively new method of nitrogen uh, prepared cocktails. So thank you again, and let's be careful and respectful of our alcohol consumption so that our community and our reputations are left intact. Thank you again. Goodbye. <laughs>